AQA A-Level Biology Paper 3 is a little bit unique amongst A-Level papers, A-Level Science papers, because it has a massive essay at the end. This is worth 25 marks and it is over 30% of the marks on the paper, but it is not enough just to write down stuff you know. There is a formula, there is a format to help you get the most marks. So in this video I'm going to talk you through that format and how to understand what the examiners are looking for so you can get the most marks possible. I know lots of you are going to be furiously making notes and trying to write down everything I say in this video but you don't have to because to go with this there is the book over my website. It is also available on Kindle Unlimited so you can go and read it on there for free and then ignore it after your exams. But it is important that you do pay attention to what I'm saying because the structure of the essay is really important. Now this essay is generally a very open-ended question about which you can write a lot of stuff. It will be something like the importance of two, so the importance of nitrogen to living organisms, something very very broad and open like that, about which you can pull on lots of different sections of your A-level knowledge and write, and this is what the examiners are looking for. They're looking for a synoptic essay, which means they're looking for bits from different areas of your A-level put together in a nice structure. We do not need an introduction or a conclusion to this because this is not history or English. We want a set of paragraphs, a set of five paired paragraphs. And each of these pairs of the paragraphs are going to be looking at a different part. So the first paragraph is your AO1, your recall. What do you know about this? Follow that up with your AO2 paragraph. So the, the why is this important paragraph. So take what you said in your AO1 paragraph and then describe why it is important. And we want this for five different topics. So we're looking for 10 paragraphs. An AO1 paragraph, an AO2 paragraph, what it is, why it is important, what it is, why it is important. So we're going to have five topics, two paragraphs for each topic. One on AO1, what you know about it, one on AO2, why it is important. The examiners will probably just mark the four best topics, but it is important to try and do five so that they have the choice of things to mark. If you only do three, then you are limiting the level that you can get in your answer because the examiners are looking for a holistic answer in this so that they know that you really do have a broad knowledge of the A-level curriculum and you can write about it. And it is important to write about it in A-level depth. If you use lots of GCSE phrases, lots of GCSE terminology and only write about GCSE or just year 12 content, then that's not writing about it in A-level depth. If you pick one topic and write about it in fantastic university detail, still you're not writing about it in A-level depth and you haven't written about enough topics. So it is really important that you understand what the examiners are looking for so that you know what to write. Now when they are marking this, the examiner will read through your essay and decide which band it fits in. There are five different bands with five marks for each band. Then they'll look in a bit more detail and decide does it go to the top of this band or the bottom of this band or sit in the middle of it. The majority of these essays are getting 15 out of 25 marks, which is still very respectable. But there are a few easy things that you can do to jump up to the 20 out of 25 marks. And that is making sure you're writing about enough topics and making sure you're writing about the this is important because at an A-level standard. Saying that oxygen is important because without it we will die, that's not an A-level standard. Completely true statement, but not A-level standard because my kids could probably tell you that. You have to talk about things like respiration and the processes involved in that 
and energy lots and lots of things can take that without it we will die statement and expand it and turn it into A-level content. Don't forget to help you use correct terminology for your A-level biology. I have written a glossary booklet which has loads and loads and loads of words in there for you with the correct definitions to help you use them properly. You should always start off your essay with a plan. Now this can just be the 10 paragraphs you're going to write. AO1 is this, AO2 is this and then just really quickly bullet point things out. Maybe draw a box around this or make it clear, very clear that this is the essay plan. This bit will not be marked. Start your essay off by telling the examiner which question you're answering. Some of the questions are really similar. So the importance of movements within cells or the importance of movement between cells are very, very different topics. But that title is only differ by one word. And if the examiner can't tell which question you're answering, it's really hard for them to give you marks. And we want to make it as easy as possible for the examiner to give you those marks. Talking about making it easy for the examiner to give you the marks, this is a long essay. It's about 40 minutes at the end of a two hour paper. So your hand might be a bit tired by this point. Handwriting is an, or poor handwriting is an examiner's worst nightmare. Tiny handwriting, no matter how neat it is, is nearly impossible to read. Messy handwriting, where you can't actually tell the difference between lysosome and lysozyme, is also really hard to read. And this makes it hard for the examiners to give you marks. So please take care on your handwriting. Consider doing the essay first when your hand is feeling fresh and sparkly and not knackered from an hour and 20 minutes worth of writing. Just talking about A-level content, stuff that your teacher has taught you, stuff that is on the specification, will get you 23 out of 25 marks. Now this is a very 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 respectable grade for A level but if you want those extra two marks you need to show evidence of reading outside the specification. So what I've done for you in the book that I've put together for you is taken lots of different essay titles come up with things you can write about it that are in the specification and things that are beyond the specification as well. So you don't have to go and look for stuff elsewhere it's all there in this book for you writing this essay is a skill that you can practice and get better at and a brilliant way for you to practice and get better at this is by looking at other students essays and trying to mark them yourselves have they covered enough topics in enough depth is there evidence of reading outside the specification that's why in the book there are lots of example student essays with examiner feedback so you can see the marks that the examiners have given and the examiner feedback. Now for this essay it will get marks and you'll get a mark out of 25. Now some of the essays get double marked and there is a four mark allowance so if the essays are within four marks of each other great happy well done if an examiner is drastically outside of this then they will be stopped from marking. If you send your paper back for a remark and it's within the four mark allowance, there will be no change in that mark. But if it's outside, then there might be. Remember, they can go down as well as up on remarks. Now having to put together a 50,000 plus word book on this, there is no way I can cover all of it in the video. So look in the description for the links where you can go and read it for free on Kindle Unlimited or you can go and download a copy from my website which you can then keep in your folder and annotate and draw all over. This might seem like an impossible topic but once you know the skills on how to do it, you will be absolutely fine.